In this video, we're going to discuss the first law of thermodynamics. Now, in one of the previous videos, we discussed a definition known as the law of conservation of energy. And if we were to put the first law of thermodynamics into words, that is it. It is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. Now, mathematically, that uh, the first law of thermodynamics, the equation for it, shows us the two ways that this energy can be transferred and how it affects changes in total energies for the system, right? So our total energy for the system is going to have some change anytime energy is transferred, right? So we call that energy change, we use delta E to denote that energy change, right? So this is the total energy change for the system. It's going to be equal to a sum of two components, right? The first one will use a lowercase q to define, this is the heat. And the second part of that sum is the work, which we'll use a lowercase w to define. So kind of going through and defining these terms again, right? Delta E is our change in energy, right? So there's been some transfer of energy, either our system has done work on some other object, or there's been some heat transfer because of a temperature difference, right? Those are the two components, how energy can be transferred, right? So this first, this Q is heat, and the W is work, right? So now one thing that's gonna be very important here uh, is going to be the sign of Q and W, right? Whether the heat transfer or the work done is positive or negative, right? So I wanna go through those sign conventions. Okay, so sign conventions. Right, so this sign is going to be, is the important thing to understand about these sign conventions is that it's all from the point of view of your system, right? So is your system gaining or losing energy? So first let's focus on heat. So heat will be positive. You'll have a positive Q whenever heat is flowing into your system. Right? That means your system is gaining heat. So there's going to be a positive Q. So this is positive when heat is flowing into your system. So heat flowing into system. Now, Q is going to be negative when heat is flowing out of your system. So if your system is at a higher temperature than your surroundings and it is donating heat or flowing heat uh, from the system to the surroundings, that's gonna be a negative Q. It's gonna be losing heat. So heat is flowing out of your system. So Q is gonna be negative in that case, right? Now, this is pretty easy to understand, right? Because you're, you're basically looking at a difference, right? If you're gaining heat, it's positive, losing heat, negative. That's pretty simple to understand. Now, with work, it's going to be a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit less clear about how, whether it's going to be positive or negative, but I believe it's just as easy to understand. So let's take the positive case. So when will you have positive work? Positive work is going to be when the surroundings is doing work on the system. So this is when work is done on the system. Work done on the system, right? So uh, keep in mind that original example that I gave of a person pushing a block, right? If your system is the block, if work is being done on the block, that's a positive work, right? Work is done on the system. Whereas work is negative when the system does work on the surroundings. So uh, work when work is done by the system, it's negative. Right, so the way that I like to remember these sign conventions, especially for work, is that if you think of the system as some lazy person that doesn't want to do anything, right? So let's say that you, you have some, you know, if you have to do work, right? Work done by the system is a negative outcome if you don't want to do any work. So that's going to be negative versus if work is done on you, then that is something positive, right? But have the system having to do work is going to be negative. So that's just the way that I remember it. Um, when you're thinking about it thermodynamically, Work is being, if work is done on the system, that's energy being transferred to the system. So similar to how heat 
is flowing into the system. Work is flowing into the system. So that's going to be positive. Uh, same thing with negative work. If work is, is being done by the system, that's an energy transfer from the system to the surroundings. So, uh, so that's going to be negative, right? So I think these sign conventions are easy to remember once you get them straight in your head, but it's going to be very crucial for you to keep that, um, these sign conventions straight, especially for work. So let's look at some examples. All right, so I've got two problems here. Um, and we're going to go through each one. So the first problem says a gas absorbs 45 kilojoules of heat and does 29 kilojoules of work. Calculate delta E, right? So this is some gas sample. It's, absor it's uh, absorbing some heat and doing some amount of work. And we have both of those quantified in the problem. So looking at problem one, what we want to do is um, write down Q and W and make sure that we establish the sign of each, right? It's going to be very crucial here. So if heat is absorbed by this gas, that means that this Q, this heat transfer is going to be positive. So we have a positive 45 kilojoules. And this is because heat is absorbed. Right, so if heat is absorbed, then the heat transfer is positive from the point of view of our system. Now, what about work, right? It says that the system does 29 kilojoules of work. If you look back at our sign conventions, if work is done by the system, that's gonna be negative. So we actually have a negative 29 kilojoules because work is done by the system. So work is done by the system. So that's going to be a negative 29 kilojoules, right? So even though these signs weren't explicitly given to you in the problem because of the context of what your system is doing, that you're going to know whether these, uh, the heat and work is gonna be positive or negative, right? So now we have everything we need to calculate delta E in this situation. So we know that the, from the first law of thermodynamics, delta E is just gonna be equal to Q plus W. So that means we're gonna have 45 kilojoules minus 29 kilojoules. And that means that the total energy change for your system is going to be 16 kilojoules. Okay, so crucial thing there was just making sure you know the signs of the heat and the work. So second problem says calculate delta E for a system undergoing an endothermic process in which 15.6 kilojoules of heat flows and where 1.4 kilojoules of work is done on the system. So endothermic is going to be when heat is absorbed by the system. So I want to just define these terms before we talk further about this problem. So endothermic is where heat is absorbed by your system, right? Whereas, and by contrast, exothermic is where heat is released by your system. Right, so now that we have those two definitions, we have everything we need to interpret this problem. So for problem two, right, it's saying that we have an endothermic process in which 15.6 kilojoules of heat flows. So that means that our system is gonna be gaining 15.6 kilojoules of heat, right? So uh, Q is going to be a positive 15.6 kilojoules, right? Because the heat is absorbed. Now it says that 1.4 kilojoules of work is done on the system so again, that's, if work is done on the system, that's going to be a positive, right? A, ch a positive change in heat, in work, right? So that's gonna be positive 1.4 kilojoules. All right, so now all we have to do is just add these together. First law of thermodynamics, delta E is equal to Q plus W. So we got 15.6 kilojoules of heat, positive 15.6 plus 1.4 kilojoules. And that's going to give us 17.0 kilojoules of total energy change. All right, okay, so simple as that, right? The only thing really here is just to, really the crux of figuring out these problems is just making sure that you have the signs correct 
based on the situation described in the problem. And if you have those signs correct, then it's just as simple as adding together both of those energy transfer mechanisms, however much energy is transferred through them, to get the total energy transfer from the law of conservation of energy.